YouTube, Edgar here, and welcome to Artifexy, and here you will learn everything you ever wanted to know about world building, and then some. Terrestrial planets are composed primarily of silicate, rock, and metals. Additionally, they commonly feature solid planetary surfaces, an iron core, and silicate mantles. Possibly also topographical features like mountains and volcanoes if tectonically active. And if a hydrosphere is present, rivers, lakes, and oceans, amongst other features. But I find this very unsatisfactory. This definition holds for our solar system with Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, but it gets a bit shaky when we look at so-called terrestrial exoplanets. Why? Let's start with density. Density, or more precisely volumetric mass density, is defined mathematically as mass divided by volume. And when dealing with near spherical objects like planets, volume is given by this equation. It's easy then to see that density is a function of mass and radius, so let's analyze the broad range of planetary types based on mass and radius and see where that gets us. First off, let's put some figures on the upper and lower boundaries of the various planetary types with respect to mass. Conservative estimates yield a mass range of 0.0001 to 0.1 Earth masses for dwarf planets. 0.0001, according to the IAU, is the lowest acceptable dwarf planet mass, and at 0.1, a body possesses enough mass to begin orbital clearing, thus can no longer be called a dwarf planet. Terrestrial planets then have a mass between 0.1 and 10 Earth masses. The range stops at about the 10 mark because at this point an object will be of sufficient mass to begin accreting a thick gaseous envelope, thus transitioning from a terrestrial world to a gaseous world. The mass range of gaseous planets is 10 Earth masses to 13 Jupiter masses. At 13 Jupiter masses, gas giants may begin deuterium fusion, so it have to instead be called brown dwarfs. Brown dwarfs can go up to about 75 to 80 Jupiter masses. Objects greater than 80 Jupiter masses will be massive enough to begin hydrogen fusion in their cores, which is the defining characteristic of stars. Okay, so now we have a nice mass range to plug into our density equation. So now let's define by radius. Here's a chart from NASA showing 2740 Kepler planetary candidates arranged by radius. Earth sized is anything below 1.25 Earth radii, Super Earth 1.5 to 2, Neptune size 2 to 6, Jupiter size 6 to 15, and objects larger than Jupiter are defined as being anything greater than 15 Earth radii. Notice, however, the absence of dwarf planets from this list. That's because we've yet to detect any extrasolar dwarf planets. But based on observations of our solar system's dwarf planets, scientists have demonstrated that bodies 200 to 300 kilometers in size tend to be in hydrostatic equilibrium. So we can tentatively set a radius of 0.03 as a lower limit for dwarf planets. So now we have some idea of what sort of mass and radius we are dealing with with respect to each planetary type. Let's plug in some values and see what happens. I'm going to adapt our density formula slightly like this to give me an answer relative to Earth's density. So let's say I have a planet whose mass is 1 Earth mass and whose radius is 1.9 Earth radii. This gives me a density of 0.15 or 0.83 grams per centimeter cubed. Wait, hold on a second. The terrestrial planets in our solar system have densities ranging from 3.9 to 5.5 grams per centimeter cubed. 0.83 is way below this. In fact, our hypothetical planet here has more in common with Saturn than it does with Earth, which would imply that it's not a rocky terrestrial world at all. It's probably a gas planet. But how can that be? I mean, we chose a mass from the terrestrial mass range and a radius from the Earth-like range, but somehow we ended up with a gaseous planet. And therein lies the trouble with terrestrial planets, or more precisely, the word terrestrial. Being derived from terra, the Latin word for Earth, it automatically implies Earth-like conditions, but we've just demonstrated that this is not so. Now, the eagle-eyed amongst you would point out that I used values pertaining to super-Earths, and that super-Earth does not mean terrestrial. And this is indeed true, super-Earths are defined as being planets whose mass is greater than Earth's, but less than Uranus and Neptune's. This definition is based solely on mass, no other parameters. So then, paradoxically, low-density super-Earths will be gaseous. Intermediate-density super-Earths will either be gaseous or water worlds, depending on certain variables. And only high-density super-Earths will actually be rocky terrestrial planets. So, assuming even distribution here, two-thirds of the time when we speak of super-Earths, emphasis on the Earth part, we are referring to something that is in no way terrestrial or Earth-like. And hey, this is fine for space nerds like me, but can be alienating and confusing for people in general. So let's clear this up. Perhaps there exists some sort of mass radius relationship that governs solid planets. Sarah Seeger and her team crunched the hard numbers and determined that such a relationship does indeed exist. Unfortunately, it's not a simple power law. Rather, it's this monster. But luckily, graphs come to the rescue. 
Shown here is the data gathered by Seeger and her team, with mass shown as a function of radius all in Earth units. The solid lines represent homogeneous planets and are planets composed primarily of hydrogen, water, silicates and iron. And the broken lines represent differentiated planets. From top to bottom we have, by mass, pure hydrogen worlds, hydrogen helium worlds like Jupiter and Saturn. Here we find pure water worlds, water worlds whose mass is dominated by water, water worlds like Ganymede composed of equal parts rock and water, and water worlds dominated by rock. Now onto terrestrials. Here we have pure silicate worlds. Earth-like worlds dominated by a silicate mantle, terrestrial worlds dominated by a massive iron core like Mercury, and finally, the green line represents pure iron planets. Hey now, this is more like it. Now we have the relationship between mass and radius plotted which we can use to get proper densities. Like take our 1.9 radius planet from before. Now we can say with more certainty that such a planet should have a mass of about 20 Earth masses. And one further number crunch reveals that this world's density will be about 16 grams per centimeter cubed. There can be no doubt about it, this is definitely a terrestrial density. But is it plausible? 16 grams per centimeter cubed, I mean tantalum has a density similar to that. So let's see how we can get a more terrestrial value. Notice how the lines, particularly in the terrestrial values, seem to become constant and even decrease at high masses. This is due to electron degeneracy which really begins to take effect at high mass values. So don't expect to find any terrestrial rocky planets say 3 Earth radii in size. Now again, the eagle-eyed will become vocal and say hold on, the terrestrial band clearly extends above the 3 radius line. And again, the eagle-eyed are perfectly correct in pointing this out, but check out the masses involved. These are not the masses of terrestrial planets and anyways, scientists have stated that the majority of rocky planets will have a radius no larger than 1.6 Earth radii. So then let's work with that 1.6 value. This sets our mass at about 5 Earth masses, thus our density will be 6.73 grams per centimeter cubed, which considering the Earth's density is 5.52 grams per centimeter cubed, is finally looking a little more like it. So, in summation, let's attempt to properly define terrestrial planets. Try this on for size. Terrestrial planets, in the truest sense of the term terrestrial, are planets whose mass and radius are bound by a generic functional form. Generally speaking, their mass will be less than 10 Earth masses and they will be no larger than 1.6 Earth radii, and as a result their densities will be such that a composition of rock and metal is indicated. The trouble with terrestrial planets? Solved. Guys, if you like what you see here in Artifact Scene, click the links in the description to find me on Facebook and Twitter. And if you're interested, hit like and subscribe for more awesome science-based world building. Thank you all so much for watching. Edgar out.